Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming my May wrap up aka Asian Readathon wrap up. Yay! If you somehow missed it, in the month of May it was the Asian Readathon which I was a co-host for. It ran for the whole month and there was only five reading challenges but I decided to just keep on reading Asian book throughout the whole month when I finished the five books for the five challenges. So I will wrap them up here. I read 15 books in May so I am quite happy with that number. There is one book that is not Asian at all but I read it because there was an art. I already know this video is gonna last forever so let's just get started. Started. The first book I read in May was Force of a Thousand Landers by Julie C. Dow. This was for the challenge to read a book by any Asian author. It is basically an evil queen retelling just told from the evil queen point of view. It's more like an evil queen origin story where like you see her build up to getting the throne. I can say at once that I really really enjoyed this. I actually enjoyed like most of my reads in the beginning of the month and then in the end of the month I had a bit like medical reads but all the one in beginnings were like four stars. No five stars in the whole month though. It's a bit funny. I like how it was like me and then me but yeah. This book was quite dark and it had like a lot of bloody and gore in it but I quite enjoyed it. I really enjoyed how the main character she thought her destiny was to become empress and thereby did all these horrible things to get there and she questions her, of course herself if what she does is right or wrong and like she knows it might be wrong but she also justifies it. So you can definitely see it is like an evil story like she does like murder to get where she gets but at the same time she's the evil queen. I don't know I really liked it. I liked the Asian setting. I liked having a villain as the main character and not a good guy. I know that the next book follows basically Snow White where like she's gonna take back her kingdom from evil queen so we would get like the Snow White story or like not necessarily Snow White but the princess who has the evil stepmom evil queen poop. So that would be interesting to see and I'm really excited to read the sequel. The next book I read was The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This one was for the challenge to read a graphic novel by an Asian author or a graphic novel with an Asian character. This one follows Sebastian and Frances and Sebastian likes to cross dress. He likes to wear dresses and he found Frances where she makes these wonderful dresses for him but she gets opportunities because people see her wonderful dresses but if people find out that Prince Sebastian is, has the same tailor as his persona say, when he wears dresses it will be trouble so Frances misses out on opportunities because of that so that creates conflict between of them. It was really interesting to see how it all wrapped up and it was just the sweetest thing. It really really warmed my heart. I love the world, I love the drawings, I love the characters, I love how conflicts were really really hard for all of them. I, I, I felt a lot of emotions reading this. I was a bit annoyed on something where like something that happens to Sebastian which like should have been expected but I didn't want it to happen in that way. I wanted it to be from him and not forced because it's sort of a cliche and I wanted it more consensual but like that was more of my wishes and not like anything wrong with the story but just like it's not direction I wanted it to go but you know I'm not the one deciding the story which is fine I just I'm a bit tired of that sort of like where people are forced to say things they're not ready to share yet and it's really like a normal thing in these kinds of stories and I'm like okay but like that was my only complaint and I love the rest and it was very very cute and the art was very nice. The next book I read wasn't for any specific challenge because I was reading this while reading the other books and that is The Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Assad. I have a full video review of this on my channel. I will leave a link to it down below so I won't talk about it too long in this. This follows Fatima who finds out she has the fire of a Didin inside of her. Her life changes a lot through that. It also follows a lot more than that but basically they live also in a city named Noor where like there were people from all over the world just collecting in one city living in harmony together. It was great and there's this conflict with the Didjins and people who don't want them there in the city because they saved them a while ago with a war with the other tribe of Digins and there was just so many great elements to this. Fatima was a really really interesting main character and there were a lot of other interesting elements going on here. I think the writing particularly was what 
enjoyed the most about this. I love the writing. It was just wonderful and lush and beautiful. And I really, really liked this. The next book I read was A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahir Mafi. This was for the challenge to read a book where the main character was Asian of course but had an intersectional identity and the main character in A Very Large Expanse of Sea is Muslim. It was an own voices from Tahara and also my first book by her and as you can tell I am struggling pronouncing all the names in the whole world and I'm sorry. This follows Shirin which I probably pronounced wrong as well post 9-11 so there's a lot of Islamophobia around this time. She basically hates the world sort of and had just started to think that everyone around her hates her and judge her for being Muslim until she meets Ocean who opens her eyes to the world and other things. It's more of a love story but also with a lot of interesting themes on it and I really liked that it was a love story because I feel like Muslim teens deserve love stories just like everyone else. Shirin was a really interesting main character. I like her dynamics, her conflicts, her thoughts, how she changes, but also like the thoughts she had about the world were totally justified. Thinking how Ocean thought about the world compared to her is really interesting because he was popular and white and not a guy Shirin in her mind should be with. There was a lot of interesting dynamics in this. I think just the end was a bit rushed. It was more telling than showing. All in all, I really, really enjoyed it and I I was going to enjoy it a lot from the first time I heard about it and I'm really happy I finally got to read it. The next book I finished were Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Wardenson. I can never say her last name. I don't know why. This is my only non-Asian read for the month and I have a full video review of this as well up on my channel. This one follows Elizabeth who was grown up in a library. She is a child of the library and the libraries are sort of magical because the books are alive and she's being accused for sabotaging her library so she's being sent to the city escorted by Nathaniel who is a sorcerer and magic is seen upon as evil because to use magic you have to go on a deal with a demon and she's trying to figure out who's behind the sabotage and also finding out her feelings towards Nathaniel. It was a cute slow burn romance but also like the magic and the books and all that was great. Again check out my full video review of this. I will link it down below but it was fun. I had a lot of fun with it. And the next book I read was 6-4 by Hideo Yokoyama. This one was for the challenge to read a translated work. Translated originally from their native language. This was originally in Japanese and I read it in English. This was really long by the way. It was like 556 pages. I don't even know what to say. It's so different from what I usually read. It's like in a whole other world and it was really really interesting. Of course I have forgotten the main character's name because but he is a police officer and his daughter is missing but he doesn't work like as a detective he works like in media relations so like he's the one that the media talks to to like you know all the shit that is in the paper about all the shit that's happening he's like the boss of that he used to be a detective so he's like sort of semi-loyal to the detective department but he's also like now in the relations department as well so there's like dynamics going on about that and by dynamics I mean like there was like a literal like political war between the two departments and he's sort of like a middleman in it but not really there's also like a case going on where like many years ago was it 15 or 14 years ago there was this kidnapping called the 6-4 kidnapping they never ever saw that kidnapping and we talk a lot about it and of course that comes into play but I don't want to spoil it it's really very long. It has a lot of inner monologues and thoughts about like his assumptions and thoughts about the different departments, what they're doing, why they're doing it. He assumes like, oh, they're going to do that and that and that. Or maybe they're going in that direction and doing that and that and that. And there's pages upon pages upon this. And it was like interesting. Like I was really into it. I thought it was going to be like a crime novel, but it was more like a thriller kind of novel. But also like it was really heavily political. I feel like it learned a lot about the dynamics in like the Japanese police because you know it's different everywhere and there was just so many things going on plots upon plots it does unravel quite well I just feel like it could have been even more and you also never find out certain things which really bothers me but at the same time 
all the things were really, really nice. And I was really shocked and thought that the revelation that we got were really, really good. As I said, it's like so different from what I usually read. And I usually like to be able to say that I would read any genre, anything. Again, I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it. But it can get a bit tedious because, as I said, all of the thoughts and stuff. But it does like give weight to everything and make you think about a lot of things. One of the most unique and interesting reads this month. My next read was A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, edited by Ellen O and Elise Chapman. This was the group book for the Asian Readathon and also the last one for a specific challenge that I'm gonna talk about. The rest is Asian reads, yes, but not for any challenge. We had a full live show discussion about this, plus talking generally about Asian identity and diversity in books, I guess, so I will link that down below. It was on Cindy's channel. This was a story of retellings of different Asian legends and myths. Some of them I liked a lot and some of them were like totally okay and some of them were like meh. So it's really hard to write an anthology in general I believe to have every single story to be super good but I enjoyed it a lot. I really really liked how it was just all inspired by Asian myths and stuff because it just filled my Asian loving heart. I give it four out of five stars. So yeah, I don't think the others enjoyed it as much, but that was just funny. I talked so much about this book that I don't want to talk about it anymore. So we are just moving on. The next book I read after that was Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This one is a Japanese inspired fantasy where the main character is a kitsune and the other main character is a samurai assassin shadow dude. I've forgotten their names again. I I don't know why. I feel like they had really easy names. I've read some of the books since then, they just slipped out of my mind. In this fantasy world, every thousand years, the dragon comes out from the sea and one person can make one wish, which can be anything. And it's really horrible if this wish falls into the wrong hands. There's three scrolls that is needed to find the dragon or go to the dragon or may be able to make the wish. And there's a lot of different people wanting that scroll right now. The main character, Kitsune Girl, grew up in temple where they were hiding one of the scrolls and it gets burned down and then she needs to take the scroll to another temple and then she meets the dude Lol, and he escorts her because he's also after the scroll for other people and basically like it's a long journey thing where they are able to fall in love but I enjoyed it there were a lot of different kinds of creatures and just a lot of enjoyable content I believe I really enjoyed it so I gave it four stars as well I had a lot of fun with it so I do definitely recommend it. I like anything Japanese inspired almost because, you know, I'm in Japan. The next one I read was Shadow Me by Thahir Mafi and this one is an old classic YA. It's not that old. I don't know why I'm calling it old, but like it was in the golden era of dystopia YA and I haven't read it until now. I only remember the main character's name because I haven't seen it so many times because people talk about this book. His name is Juliet and when she touches people, they feel pain and eventually they die. So she has been locked up and then she is brought out because this dude what's his name warner wants her to use her or like he's obsessed with her i don't even know but also like adam is there and they knew each other and they have a thing. It's basically just a love triangle with people with powers. It was an intense book. I enjoyed it. It was like when things are revealed I'm not even surprised anymore because it's dystopia. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars because it was okay and I liked it. I am medical excited to read on and see what happens. The next one I read was Destroy Me by Tara Murphy because it was in the end of my Kindle version and I couldn't just not read it. It was like 100 pages long so I'm totally counting it as a book on its own. That was just Warner's novella and his perspective after the events of Shadow and I was like why does people like this dude? It's sort of creepy but I don't trust Adam in the moment I am in so I am really on not Team Warner or Adam but I have no idea. We will see what happens. I then read Sapiens A Brief History of Humankind by Jual Noah Harari. This was an audiobook that I listened to out throughout the month and this is a non-fiction book and I rarely read non-fiction so 
a plus to me and I heard just a lot of things about this book for a really long time. It's really particularly popular in Norway, I don't know why. I guess it's popular everywhere but I haven't really seen people talk about it in the book world I'm in but like in Norway it was talked about a lot. It's basically the title, it is the story of humankind but like really it's not simplified, it just goes through the history but in an understandable way. It's not like the language is easy enough for anyone to understand and that's why I really like about it because sometimes when you read non-fiction you feel kind of stupid and this book didn't make me feel stupid. It takes examples so well, it's really really neutral, it takes a sample from loads of different perspectives. I was surprised how neutral it was and I really enjoyed that. It sort of made me scared because I thought about the past and I thought about the future and I don't like thinking about our world so that sucked but it was enjoyable and I learned a lot and I want to reread it because I feel like I already forgotten a lot of it. I just have a lot of interesting thoughts how everything we basically do and I made is just it's not real because it's in our imagination and it's true. Literally we're reading books and it's all not real just like the rest of the things in the world that doesn't really exist and I think that it's so mind-blowing to think about because we have all these things in the world that it's not real and me don't even notice. I've done read The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is a Chinese inspired fantasy that I wanted to read for a really really long while because I heard so many great things about it. I was kind of disappointed by this because I just thought it was gonna be amazing and it was like okay. Like it wasn't bad, I just, there were some things in this that just didn't click with me. This is the incident where I say it's me not you. We follow Rin who searched really really hard to go to this really prestigious university because she doesn't want to marry this old dude that her foster parents wants her to marry and this is like a military university because China, which is not named China but I'm just calling it China, is like always like on the brink of war on like there's this uh, people on an island that wants to take over and take the land and for some reason I thought about the people on the island as Japan because they used to in invade China and wanted their land so so basically the evil people were Japan. But yeah, it's a fantasy. It's not really that, but it's inspired. The thing that really caught me off was that in the beginning it was sort of like a school book where we went to the academy and I was like great classes woohoo and then suddenly midway through we went into a war book and it feels like the beginning of the book and the end of the book it's like two totally different books it's not the same book it just feels so different and then there's this element of magic that is put in there where like they sort of get the magic from the gods because they are sh shamans but they all go crazy if they use it too much and the whole like how do you have magic but it was just so out of this world it was like oh now we see how the world hangs together and I was like whoa that went deep and I don't know it just felt really strange it's really really brutal by the way it's not why at all there's this point in the book where I was like oh shit this is harsh like there was a lot of violence I was not like uncomfortable because I don't mind it but just like a warning for people who do it was an intense book man like parts of it were really really good but parts of it was also really really strange some parts were like really grounded and then there was other parts that were so out of this world and it didn't feel like they all fitted together in the same world. I don't know. I don't know how I feel but the ending was really interesting. I do want to continue reading but I was kind of disappointed. I would give it like 3.5 I guess. I expect it to be like five stars so yeah but it isn't bad. I was just like the execution could have been better. That's what I'm trying to say. The next book I read was The Kiss Continent by Helen Huang. Yes. This one I listened to an audiobook in like two days because suddenly I got an audiobook kick. I think I also was like sick at this point so I needed something to pass the time while I was dying and sick. This one follows Stella who wants to be better at sex so she hires an escort Michael to teach her. It was like a sort of romantic rom-com thing, adult. There's a lot of sex in it. Stella's also autistic and the author's also so it's an always is in that way and Michael family and himself is Vietnamese so I really like that. They have conflicts throughout the way and of course like things that separate them and blah 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 but it wasn't like over the top. It was really really cute and I really really liked the book so I give it four out of five stars. It was really really enjoyable. If you want really 
cute, steamy romance, diverse romance, then I would recommend this one. And the 14th book, the second to last book, oh my god, we are still here, is Three Dark Crowns by Kendra Blake. This one I have heard a lot of things about, I have wanted to read it for a long time. In this world there's always born triplets and they are supposed to kill each other and one of them will be queen. We are following the triplets that are that generation in the book, obviously. We have Mirabella, who is an elementalist and supposedly the most powerful of them all right now and everyone thinks she's gonna win. Catherine, who is the poisoner, she's really bad at her poisoning powers and can't really use them. And then we have Arizona, I don't even know how to say her name, Lol, who is and naturalist, but she can't use her powers either, so I don't even know why they had its powers in the first place. This is like the whole book sort of builds up to the time where they can start killing each other, which is like one year they, where they can do that, and we are like before that year. So nothing really happened. I knew it was going to be slow paced because I saw a lot of people talking about it. It wasn't even slow paced, it was just like nothing happened, so there was no pace to talk about it in the first place. Like in the end, things did sort of take up and things happen but I feel like the book could have started in the end and then we could have just gone right into the year where they could start killing each other but that is going to be the next book. We really just established the relationships and the world which I did enjoy and I did enjoy the world building but I just feel like the book could have had more guts and I wanted more but it's really funny. I, I enjoyed all of the parts of this because I talked a lot about it with my friends because we have a joke where we are one queen each because they fit our personality traits ish thingy and I know it sounds really stupid but it made the book really entertaining for me. I do really want to continue the series because I want to see how it goes and have a feeling it can get stronger as we go on. I gave it two out of five stars. I will continue it. And the last book I read this month was I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Marie Gu. This is a book that is kind of inspired by Korean dramas and talks a lot about Korean dramas and the main character wants to book friend and follows a recipe she has made out of Korean dramas and I love Korean drama so that was funny but I didn't really like this because I feel like the main character does some really questionable choices in this and there's no consequences for her choices. I know it's supposed to be funny and like a wrong calm comedy thing but I didn't find it particularly funny. I find it sort of damaging and I'm like why oh, is no one talking to this girl? So I don't know that's the perspective I have but I did enjoy some parts and thought that it was sweet sometimes. So I gave that one two out of five stars as well. And it's all the 15 really really Asian books and Asian authors I have read throughout the month. I'm really happy about that. June is Pride Month so I'm gonna try to read as much Pride books as possible and you will see me soon in a new video. Yay! Okay, I'm going now. Thank you so much for watching. Do tell me the books you read in May if you want to, if you participated in the Asian Readathon and you will see me soon in a new video. Bye!